Let's build a multi-unit rental lot in every single world in The Sims 4. This is part 9 and we're building a capsule hotel in Mount Komorebi. Here we are in the world of Mount Komorebi and as you can see this world is very much inspired by Japan. And we're in kind of like a residential neighborhood but there is still some action like we have some corner stores over here, a karaoke bar over there, this nice park in the middle. This kind of feels like it could be an up and coming neighborhood so I thought that this lot right here would be perfect for our capsule hotel. Now if you don't know what a capsule hotel is, according to Wikipedia they're also known in the western world as pod hotels. It's a type of hotel developed in Japan that features many many small bed-sized rooms known as capsules. Capsule hotels provide cheap, basic overnight accommodation for guests who do not require or who cannot afford larger, more expensive rooms offered by more conventional hotels. Personally, I've never seen a pod hotel in North America before, but I do know they're very popular in Japan and I've seen a ton of YouTube videos on them. So I thought it would be a no-brainer to make a capsule hotel in Mount Komorebi. Also, if you're wondering what used to be on this lot, it was a starter home before. So I think replacing this starter home with another style of budget accommodation would be perfect. Don't forget to leave a comment down below as to which multi-unit lot we should do next and in which world. I'll have the map up on the screen so you know which ones we have yet to do. And without further ado, let's get started on our capsule hotel. Okay, I kind of want to include like two structures on this lot, one of them being the hotel obviously, and the second structure being kind of like a corner store. Perhaps we can have the owner of the hotel live here and maybe they run like a little restaurant or a laundromat downstairs and then on this side I'm thinking we have like a two or maybe a three-story hotel. I'm reluctant to make it too tall just because all of the other buildings in the area are like two stories max so this one being three stories will already stand out quite a bit. Right away I'm gonna go in and filter by the snowy escape expansion pack so we can pick some fencing as well as some exterior paint and because the snowy escape pack does have such a distinct Japanese art style I am gonna be using a ton of it in this build to help these more modern structures blend into the environment. So I'm just warning you now, I hope you have the Snowy Escape Pack if you're planning on downloading this build. But if you don't have the Snowy Escape Pack yet, today's sponsor might just be able to help you get it sooner rather than later. Trust me, you're gonna want to hear about this one. Misplay is a loyalty app for us gamers. Whether you're looking for a little help covering your weekly Amazon purchases or perhaps your next expansion pack purchase, with Misplay, you can earn rewards simply by discovering and playing mobile games. Misplay offers a huge catalog of games, including puzzle games, which are my personal favorite by the way, word games, card games, strategy, adventure, and more. The more you play, the more points you can earn, and then you can redeem your points for gift cards from your favorite brands like Amazon, Visa, and tons of others. And this is crazy, but over 60 million dollars in gift cards have already been redeemed. Like, what? I should have started this sooner. I spend so much time trying to find new puzzle games to play while winding down before bed, I could have been earning points this entire time. Now I must say, I am a solitaire girly through and through, and with Misplay, I discovered a cute new version called Solitaire Fishland, and I am racking up the points. Currently, I'm working towards either a Starbucks gift card or a Sephora gift card, I haven't decided yet. But I know you guys love your mobile gaming. In fact, I bet some of you are out there playing games while you're watching my videos. You should try out Misplay for yourself and start earning some points. Visit misplay.com doctor or click the link in my description to download Misplay for free. You'll get 200 bonus points for signing up today, plus use my code doctor50 inside the app for an additional 50 free points, which will help towards redeeming your first gift card. Let me know which gift card you guys want to redeem and help me decide, should I get the Starbucks gift card or the Sephora gift card. Here I'm just grabbing the snowy escape beige stone and wrapping it around the entire building and then grabbing the darker red shade for the smaller building. For the top roof piece I'm grabbing this black tile from the base game and then I'm also going to use the white tile on this side and obviously finishing off with a matching roof trim. Now I'm just grabbing these brown shoji windows from the snowy escape pack for my second floor here. And then I think let's grab these same windows in black to put along the side of our hotel structure. I really want this build to be a good fusion of modern and traditional. So on this side, I'm going with the more traditional windows, but on the front side, I think I'm gonna go with like contemporary big open windows. So the front of the hotel is obviously looking very flat. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut out the wall here and kind of indent it a little bit. Kind of like creating mini balconies like so. That gives the build much more dimension. Now I'm just gonna repeat it on the second floor. I just lined it with this really short half wall. Now I'm gonna grab this black tile again to add some definition. Okay, this is kind of tough. We have three different windows that all fit perfectly, like wall to wall, floor to ceiling, a perfect fit. This one right here is from the Eco Lifestyle Pack. This one is from Growing Together, and this one is from the Desert Luxe Kit. 
This one is really cool because the window is on an angle, but I think if we were to use them on the entire hotel like so, it looks a little bit too contemporary. Like I want this build to be modern fusion, but not like ultra modern, if you know what I mean. I feel a similar vibe coming from these eco lifestyle ones. They're a little bit too clunky. So I think the winner here today are these ones from Growing Together. For some additional dimension, I'm grabbing these slats from the city living pack, and I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other, going all the way up to the roof. I don't know, I just think it adds a little bit more visual interest than just using a thick column. What do you guys think? For the hotel door, let's go with something kind of modern. I'm thinking maybe this one from Discover University. Now let's add these air conditioning units on the exterior from the for rent pack. And I think I'm also gonna add one over here to our owner's unit. I need this hotel to pop a lot more. So I'm gonna grab this huge neon sign from the city living pack and place it on the side of our hotel here. Capsule hotels are often very like fun and funky. So I think that this really fits the vibe. Also, this pink and purple swatch really blends in with all of the like cherry blossom trees in the environment. Let's also grab these snowy escape lanterns, but use one of these fun, colorful swatches and place them around the building. And once again, the growing together furniture aesthetic makes no sense to me. Like I have no idea how this bamboo item fits the growing together aesthetic, but I'm seriously not trying to sound like a hater, okay? But the growing together furniture is just like a mess. <laughs> and don't get it twisted. It doesn't mean that I don't like the furniture whatsoever. I do like it a lot. It just is not intuitive to me and it just makes no sense. I just put down these snowy escape lanterns. Now I'm gonna finish off this backside with this open neon sign from Get to Work. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing I did forget to do is I wanna put down pavement over the entire lot. I don't think the grass really makes too much sense. You can go in with any pavement that you want. I'm actually gonna go in with this hexagon tile one from Journey to Batu. I know, sue me, I'm using Journey to Batu, but honestly, you can't deny that this is one of the nicest like pavements in the game. Honestly, as much as I try and avoid using Journey to Batu in most of my builds, sometimes this pavement is just calling my name and I have to use it. It just looks so nice, don't you think? It actually kind of makes me angry that they wasted such a beautiful pavement on Journey to Batu and didn't include this in like literally any other pack. In fact, it would have been cheaper for all of us if they just put it in a kit. Here's the thing, I cannot in good faith recommend that you buy the Journey to Batu pack. And it's not because I don't think these beautiful floor tiles are worth the money, because in some ways I do think it's worth the money, but the real reason is because I don't want your guys' catalog to be clogged with all of this stuff that you are never going to use. <laughs> like what is this? Who is that? <laughs> You simply cannot put a price tag on the headache that all of this extra clutter will cause you. Seriously, if you could buy the Journey to Batu pack and only buy this tile, I would recommend that you get it. <laughs> but because it comes with all of this other like junk, honestly, it's just not worth it to me. If we had the option to like right click objects in the catalog and hide them because we know we're never gonna use them, that would be a game changer. That would seriously make the building experience like 70,000 times more enjoyable. Like I'm, I'm writing a letter. I'm writing a letter to the Sims team. Come on Sims team, I know we're buds, make it happen for me. <laughs> Okay, the hotel is looking cute, but not cute enough. So I'm gonna do something kind of drastic and make it look more neon. Let's grab this pink glowy wallpaper from the spa day pack and add it to these cutouts. Okay, it's kind of a lot, but at the same time, because it's like indented inwards, it's kind of subtle. And I think if we add one of these cherry blossom trees onto the lot, it will kind of tie in the pink coloring and we'll grab more of these lanterns to kind of frame the entrance. Let's also bring these lanterns around the back so it looks pretty from all angles. Okay, I just realized the back here is extremely plain, so I'm gonna add some small balconies here and create kind of like a fire escape as well. We'll grab these eco lifestyle ladders in the black swatch and then just cascade them all the way down to the ground. And let's also include this large dumpster from the eco lifestyle pack to kind of make this area look kind of like an alleyway, like a trendy, nice alleyway. <laughs> These get to work exit signs on top of the doors would also be pretty cool. And let's put them on the front of the building as well. The hotel is looking super cute. I love how it's like traditional on the back and then more fun on the front. Now I think we should work on the owner's unit. It would be really fun if they ran like a little cafe or restaurant out of the downstairs portion of their home. So I just placed down this kitchen item from Dine Out. It has like a cutout, so it looks like you can order food from the outside. And let's continue our pink theme by adding these pink lanterns around the building. And then on the back of the building, I'm just adding this snowy escape mural. I imagine a local artist from the neighborhood painted this for 
the owner. It just feels like it would be a very tight-knit community in this area, don't you think? Here's what the back is looking like. I also added a similar fire escape area to the side of this house. Now in the front courtyard here, I'm gonna go in with some of these picnic benches. I think because we're imagining this is like a little cafe or some sort of food establishment, it would make sense to have some place to eat. And then we can also go in with the snowy escape umbrellas as well. These come in some really fun colors like pink and purple, which will match our hotel vibe. Also grabbing another one of these signs from the city living expansion pack. And I'm just gonna try and find one that fits the overall theme. I think this pink and yellow sign would be perfect. And then I also found this pink sign from the city living pack. It has lanterns on it, so we have to use it. I just added some of these snowy escape vending machines to the side of the building here. It kind of looks like a cool alleyway. And I think that's gonna be it for our exterior for the owner's corner store slash cafe and capsule hotel. I think this lot adds a ton of fun personality to this neighborhood. And I also like how from this angle, you can't see the bright colors too much and it still blends in with the neighborhood really nicely. I hope you guys don't mind that I added a little bit of a modern touch. And you know what? I think adding this swanky new hotel will really help to drive tourism to this neighborhood, don't you think? But let me know what you guys think of the exterior in the comments down below and let's get started on the interior of the capsule hotel so the top two floors will exclusively just be four pod hotel rooms so this one has three rooms and this one has three rooms and i made these rooms specifically this size because i wanted to be able to use these pod beds from the get famous pack i feel like these pod beds best illustrate exactly how it would feel like to sleep in a pod hotel in like a very confined space so obviously these rooms are a little bit more spacious than real capsule hotels. In a true capsule hotel, you quite literally just like slide into your little pod and that's all you have. You can't even get up and walk around. You can only lay flat basically. But obviously in The Sims, there's like routing considerations we need to make. So this is as small as we can make the rooms. Now for the bottom floor, this will be our lobby and check-in area and also where our communal bathroom is. I did already work on the bathroom a little bit and I really wanted it to have that communal feel. So I have these two toilet stalls from the high school years pack and then these two sink vanities. These are from City Living. And then on the other side over here, we have our shower stalls and these are from Snowy Escape. And in case while you're showering, you want to like lock up your belongings, I did include this locker, which is also from Snowy Escape. For now, I'm just gonna add our bathroom door right here and then we can continue with the rest of the lobby. For our lobby area, I feel like we should just go in with our classic kitchen counter front desk trick. It's funny because when I first started the series, I was so unsure about how to make like commercial properties, but now I feel like I know all the tricks I know which packs to use. You have to like flip a switch in your brain to not think so residential. Like things don't have to be so cluttered and cozy. Sometimes you can leave things a little bit more bare. And instead of adding a ton of like photos and countertop clutter, you add like fire extinguishers and exit signs as your clutter. Okay, I know this is like a tea storage thing, but I'm gonna try and pass it off as some sort of front desk decoration. I just put down this file cabinet from Get to Work and now I'm gonna go in with this drinks tray from Eco Lifestyle. I realized I didn't really put any like signage or branding on the front of the hotel. So I'm thinking these blue lanterns will be our branding. These words right here are the hotel name. I also desperately need to make this lobby more vibrant and fun. Let's bring in some of that neon energy we had going on the outside. It is kind of difficult though, because the snowy escape furniture is far from neon. So we're gonna have to lean into a lot of other packs for this lobby. If it didn't have the blanket, this high school years couch would be perfect. I think the blanket just looks a little bit too homey and residential. These Discover University couches might be our best bet. We'll put the couches on this side, maybe mount a TV up there. And then hopefully we have room to put a ping pong table in this corner. I think it'll just barely fit right here. It's not ideal, but I really want to include it because I do think pod hotels would probably attract a younger demographic because it's so cheap to stay here. Maybe let's grab this neon sign from the Mosquito Pack to add like a statement piece to the wall here. As for TV, we'll mount this massive one from the base game just on top of these armchairs here. Okay, I'm just mixing some of these more traditional snowy escape pieces with these more colorful, fun, modern Discovery University pieces to create that kind of fusion decor style. Oh, and also since Mount Komorebi is a ski town, I thought it would be nice to include this like ski and snowboard rack as well. Maybe the college students come here for like winter break, but they can't afford to stay in the nice villas at the base of the mountain. So they come stay at this affordable pod hotel 
hotel. Okay, I do like all of the different fun colors we have going on, but it's still looking just a little bit too bland. I feel like the floor is the issue. I either need to add some fun rugs or perhaps just change the floor in general. I could go all in with like the tatami mat design just to give it more of that traditional flair. Honestly, even this doesn't really solve the problem. It still looks kind of bland. If we want to go really intense, I could bring the glowy pink floor onto the interior. That's obviously way too much on its own, but what if I cover it up with a bunch of rugs? I can size up this black faux fur rug from the Vintage Glamour pack and place it right here. Perhaps if we add some room separation like this, it will just help break up all the colors. We can add some of these shoji windows as well so you can't quite see all of the color peeking through. Okay, here is the finished lobby. It is definitely not my usual vibe and I don't think I've done anything like this before. I do admit having the glowing floors is a lot, so I think adding this room separation with the shoji windows really helps to break it up a bit. And then to tone it down a bit, I just use these tatami mat floors from the Snowy Escape pack. I know this isn't like the traditional way you're supposed to lay them out, but I figured for this like budget hotel, these aren't like the legit expensive tatami mats. They're more just for aesthetic. And then I still wanted there to be some pink personality in this lobby. So luckily this vintage glamour fluffy rug came in this perfect hot pink color as well. But please let me know what you guys think of this lobby. I really tried my best to make it colorful and funky and fun and futuristic looking, but also give it that like Japanese fusion. And I mean, if I walked into this lobby with a bunch of my friends in college, I think that this would be a really fun and welcoming space. So let's move on to the upstairs. Okay, for the two upper floors, we literally just have six pod rooms like so and a long skinny hallway. So there really isn't much more to add. I think the only thing that would kind of make sense is to add some vending machines at the end of the hallway, just in case they get hungry in the middle of the night and everything else is closed. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I go traveling, I always get really nervous that I'm not gonna be able to find food somewhere. Like if I were to check into a hotel in the middle of nowhere and there's no like 24 hour convenience store or like a 24 hour McDonald's nearby, that would like seriously stress me out. Like I need to have the reassurance that if at 11 PM I randomly am starving or so thirsty, I need to be able to have access to like hot food. And I don't mean like I want some pretzels or a granola bar, like I need hot food. I don't know if anybody else can relate or if I just sound crazy right now But whenever I go on a flight and I know we're gonna land like kind of late like maybe at 9 p.m Or 10 p.m I will make sure to pack like multiple instant cup noodles because my biggest fear is like arriving late to the hotel with all my friends Or all my family and me being like hey is anybody else hungry and everyone's just like no, not really or someone being like Oh sure like I have a granola bar for you if you're hungry and me having to be like yeah, no, I'm okay actually. <laughs> Am I just a painfully picky eater or can anybody else out there relate to the absolute requirement to have hot food when you're hungry? I just don't like room temperature dry snacks. I like hot food, okay? <laughs> Okay, I feel like I need to add some curtains to these huge windows because at the moment everyone can just see right inside. I'm sizing some of them down to make it look like some of the blinds are more open and some of them are more closed. And then to add back in some more light, we'll go in with the same paper lanterns we used in the lobby. Maybe we can match the color of the lantern to the color of the pod as well. I guess the only other thing we could add are more of these lockers out in the hallway. In traditional pod hotels, there's literally no space in your pod to put any of your belongings, so you do have have to leave them out in a locker outside. But with that being said, that's gonna be it for our capsule hotel. There are very minimal amenities here. We just have basic rooms, lockers, vending machines and a lobby with a large communal bathroom and some room for activities. Apparently the rooms at these capsule hotels can go as low as like $15 a night. So I think that the amenities provided are a good reflection of the price. And if your Sims are like seriously, seriously on a budget, I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to stay in a funky place like this. But let's move on to the corner store over here and we can always add some more amenities in this building. Okay, so my original thought process was to have kind of like the owner's suite up here. Maybe there's an old couple who have lived here on this property for a long, long time and they've always run like a little noodle shop downstairs or a little sushi restaurant. And this couple actually owned the entire property and a big hotel developer asked if they could develop this pod hotel on their property and they would split some of the profits or something. So now this nice couple is like part owner of this pod hotel and they like to feed all of the college kids that come to stay here. I say we roll with that story for now. So for starters, I think we should turn this into a legitimate
legitimate kitchen. To actually sell the food, are we gonna need to include the Home Chef Hustle food stall, I'm wondering? Because you can't actually like run a restaurant on the same lot as a residential lot. Okay, the functionality might be a tad sus, but in theory, I think this should work. So one sim will be in this kitchen cooking the food and then you'll put it on the counter and then you'll have to drag it to the booth and then the other sim will have to sell it at this booth. And then over here, we'll just put all of our kitchen essentials. I'm just using a bunch of items from the dino pack. Okay, here's our basic kitchen for now. I do also want to include some seating here. I know we have the picnic tables outside, so the majority of the seating will be outside, but maybe just adding like one of these booths from dino would be fun. I pretty much never use these booths because, well, I don't build restaurants ever, so I'm very eager to use it today. And let's bring in more of that snowy escape aesthetic by using these hanging lights from the pack. I want to go in with some wood on the floor just to make this look a little bit more homey, like this is clearly a family-owned restaurant. This brown one from the 4 rent pack is really pretty, and I'm also just realizing that there's like no windows in here at all, so let me fix that. That instantly adds more character to this downstairs. Now I want to go in with some greenery, it's looking quite brown in here. I just added this base game plant to the corner, as well as some more of these posters that show like the daily specials. And that's going to be it for the downstairs of our tiny Ma and Pa restaurant. I think it's so cute. I love the concept that you can serve the customers out on the patio at these picnic benches. And you might be thinking like, this is kind of lame. There's literally like three seats in this entire restaurant. But if you know, you know, all of the best restaurants are the ones that are tiny and have like three seats in them. And I also think it is more common in Japan to have like tiny restaurants with only like five seats in them. And those restaurants also do a lot of to-go orders for people who are working and are just on their lunch break. But yeah, I think it's very widely like a North American thing to have like these huge huge mega restaurant chains. So I think this is cute and different. Let me know what you guys think and let's move on to the upstairs. Before we move upstairs, I just added this snowy escape spandrel here with some matching columns. It just adds some more separation between the kitchen area and the restaurant area. And I also like the shoji window pattern on the spandrel here itself. So let's go upstairs now. For the upstairs, it's a very small floor plan. It's basically a studio apartment. We have a small landing area here so they can have a true front door as well as access to the fire escape. An ensuite bathroom right here. I just gave them the basics. I decided to give them this snowy escape tub instead of a shower since they're more elderly. I figured they might want to take a bath instead. Now for the main area here, I'm pretty sure I used like 100% snowy escape items. I laid down the green tatami mats here and yes, I know you're not really supposed to put them here with the kitchen, but it is a really small room. I also included this cozy kotatsu table where they can sit down and enjoy their meals, maybe have some hot pot as well. I included the hot pot station. And then besides that, just a basic bed and a small TV for some entertainment. So you can definitely tell that the owners here are very humble. They don't want to have any more space than they need and they've lived here for so many years and they're more than happy with sticking to their familiar surroundings and their routine. And I'm sure they have like kids or grandkids that have a nice big home really close by so they can go visit that anytime. And that's going to be it for our capsule hotel and ma and pa restaurant in Mount Komorebi. I really hope at least one of you out there puts this in your game and plays out the story of this ma and pa that runs this restaurant. I also think it would be really fun for your sim to like live in this capsule hotel for an extended period and hopefully the rent is like dirt cheap and see how long you can last and see how much money you can save. Like can your sim just live off the bare necessities? Please do let me know what you guys think of this lot and also if you have any comments or feedback on this series in general. I don't even think we're like halfway through or not and I don't know how long I'm going to continue with this series. So if you have any thoughts or comments or suggestions for this series as a whole, I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this and if you are new here i post weekly sims 4 build videos just like this one so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along i can't wait to read your suggestions for next week and as usual i hope you guys all have a very 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 above average day love you